Hey, how's everybody doing? All oh, right. Pretty great organization. Obviously, caught the trend uh, uh, earlier than everybody else, but uh, uh, we would not be able to deliver our service in a way that was uh, consistent for all of our customers without uh, you know this industry and a lot of the work that's uh, going on. So um, we're very, very excited. We believe that uh, the future is um, all about the world uh, being much more connected. Um, about being able to be a, a small business working and collaborating with the world's largest companies in completely different continents in completely different time zones and being able to bring um, those people together so they can actually work effectively uh, and be able to share their information. So that's what we're up to, And uh, but uh, very exciting stuff. I'm saying localization is the future. I, I, would, I would only bet on localization. So uh, I... I uh, I mean, I, I'm at a point where we could turn off the English version if you want. I don't even, I mean, uh, uh, so, uh, but we're, uh, we, we, uh, we, we're big believers that this is uh, where the world's going and, uh, and all of our software needs to be able to work perfectly for all of our customers everywhere around the world. Um, and, uh, and I think it's the digital space that's going to actually bring people together. Uh, but that only works, obviously, if our products um, are able to, to sort of uh, unify uh, how people can, uh, can communicate. And well, we just, we think that the future is going to be really cool. So, all right, good luck, everybody. All right, see you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so these are the short versions of the bios. They have longer versions, I'm sure. Longer versions are on Meetup, but GE is a senior software developer at Box. Hana Kanabia Juskaja is leading globalization efforts at Box. And say that name three times fast. Okay, thank you. Now. If, uh, if it's a good talk, and I'm sure it will be, uh, when, I'm, uh, get, I mean, uh, when Meetup sends you uh, a reminder to stay in touch, you can review them. Just hit all five stars, because I'm sure they're going to deserve it. All right? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Joe. Okay. So thank you guys for coming. I'm really happy to see everyone, uh, a lot of you uh, we know, and I'm glad that you know, a lot of people are excited about Mojito. We are actually really proud of it, so we want to share it with you. Uh, NG, you want to take us away and uh, let us know what, what it is? Go to the next slide. All right. Um, all right, first of all, yeah, if yeah. you want to tweet, here are some more hashtags that you can use that are pretty easy to remember. Box Mojito and continuous localization. All right, so what is Mojito? Um, Mojito is open source localization platform. Um, what does it mean? It's open source. It's um, all yours to use it for free. And um, it is really uh, built to help the client side companies like Box to do software development. So Mojito really focuses on your strings for your software products and it automates the end-to-end -end workflow of localization process. Um, yeah, uh, I've been working as a software developer for 10 years, and um, the trend nowadays is that we do more and more agile development, so we do smaller changes and we do frequent releases. It's called continuous integration, continuous deployment. So why don't we do continuous localization? Mojito fits perfectly in that software development process and really helps you to do seamless localization. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And so I wanted to cover a little bit about how we started. The thing is that um, we used to have a really manual process, right? So, but Box, as you saw Aaron speak, really cares about our international users, and we have a lot of them. Right, so localization is really important for us. And software localization, as a lot of you know, is pretty much the same as any other type of localization. You just take a product and you extract some content from it, you give it to translators, they do their magic, it flows back into the product, right? So it sounds pretty simple, but the thing is that before having Mojito, we have this terrible manual process. Well, it wasn't that terrible, I mean, it, it could be worse, but you have all of the problems that come with the process, okay? So first of all, you never know when developers have committed new code. You never know when the strings uh, were added, right? So I had to go around 10 different teams and say, hey guys, remember me, Hannah? You know, committed any code? 
Uh, got any new strings to localize? By the way, are you releasing your product really soon? Because uh, I need to localize this. And this is how it went. And then I had to go and collect the files from them. Right? So I had to go and ask them, oh, can you just uh, put the files in box so they, that I can localize them? So fine, collected the files, that's all right. Uh, the files are of all of different types, okay? Dot strings, dot properties, uh, resex, or what have you, right? When I send it to our translation vendor, they get kind of confused how to deal with these files because the files, you know, because they're not just different extensions, they're just different, they're formatted all differently, okay? So a lot of tools, you know, deal with these files pretty well, but some don't. So when I get back the files, guess what I get? I get broken files or I get files with strings with broken variables or placeholders, right? And so what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. Most of the time I don't really notice that, you know, I can't really notice a broken placeholder in all of the hundreds of files that I get. So I give this broken files to our developers to put back in the product and guess what happens? The product breaks. Okay, so that was not a really good process. And the thing with the process was also that once I correct something on my side, right, and God forbid I forget to tell the vendor, next time they localize the file, they override my changes. So these are the problems that we were facing before we built Mojito. Okay, Mojito is uh, an automated system that connects to your repository and it automatically detects every time a new string is merged, okay? And then Mojito has a UI that allows you to go and browse all of the strings across all of your products, and you can change them in bulk, you can send projects to translators, and this is much more convenient. So before Mojito, it, it was my full-time job to go collect files and, you know, go and localize them, send back, get bugs and, and correct strings, that I was not a happy person, okay? <laughs> so now I'm a happy person because it takes me, you know, two clicks every week to localize, all right? So I'm a much happier person and I have time to present to you today. <laughs> so basically what we're gonna cover today is going to be uh, the same stuff but with a focus on different things. So in both sessions you will uh, get a really good overview of Mojito. G's session will focus on how to set up Mojito, um, how to get it working, and also how to set up continuous integration. She will also go through the entire workflow where you create a project, send translations, get them back, and merge them back into your product code. My session will actually cover the um, project management pieces and what actually you can do with strings on Mojito. And then, you may be wondering, okay, you have this, you know, you manage strings, then do you actually let translators in and can they work on Mojito? So we're going to talk about that and the possibility of that um, at the end of my session. So we're going to split up the technical track, who wants to, the people who want to listen about how to set up and, and um, how to, you know, on the developer side, how to get it working. Um, will join G and a couple right. of our volunteers and uh, you will get to explore the sixth floor of this building. So, so for um, people who are going to the technical track, we'll all meet in front of that table so that you can we can start. all go together. And, and um, Hannah will have the awkward moment, so <laughs> enjoy. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, something that I want to um, briefly tell you before we start, okay? This, what I'm, what I'm showing there, that, that is wrong, okay? If you're not an engineer, that does not mean that you can't contribute to Mojito. First of all, we open source it, okay? So the good thing is that you get to use it for free. The bad thing is that you get to own it as much as we do, so you get to contribute to it, okay? So you don't have to be a technical person now that they all left, right? <laughs> Nobody's here to judge me saying that. Uh, you don't have to be a technical person to contribute. Ideas are very, very valuable too. 
So on your tables, you get some sticky notes and some pens. The lucky ones will get the box branded pens. But one, as you listen to this presentation and you get bored, you might, your mind may start wandering and you may come up with really great ideas. So I want you to write them down and then share with me. I know that sometimes it's kind of hard to, you know, speak up in an audience like this and just, you know, spit out an idea. So I'm going to collect the sticky notes and um, we're going to take a look at them. And, you know, if you guys want to work together on something that is related to Mojito, then we'll always be happy to. So now, again, technical people are out. I'm going to start a live demo. Okay, so that's a, some risky business, so I need to set up a little bit here. All right, I guess we're, we should be done with that. Okay, so I'm probably locked down by now, so I'm going to log in. All right, that's, the, that's a great screen to start with. All right, so we're going to go through a very, uh, very simple process that you would normally follow with in localization project management. Okay, so let's let's pretend you are updating a, an application. Okay, and Mojito has already been connected to the source code. So keep in mind that Mojito is constantly, uh, basically, almost every minute, it collects the new strings that come in, and whenever translations are done, it commits them back into the product. Okay, so here in the repository page, let's say you have, what, eight products. Uh, you will see all of them listed on this repo page. So the good thing about this uh, is that it has only the information that you will ever need. What it has is that the number of strings that still need to be translated and the number of strings that still need to be reviewed. We're going to follow a really simple workflow, uh, which is translation, review, and localization QA. Okay, so build a, an imaginary product in your mind. So that's great. Let's say you want to, you need to translate this project, Babylon. Let's say it's what your application is called. Well, first of all, you might want to look at the strings that need to be translated. Okay, so let's look at the strings. So we're now seeing the strings that only the strings that need to be translated. And it happens so that it's, you know, they're in Russian. I happen to know Russian. It happens so that they're in Russian. I don't know how that happened. So in every string, right, every string has a text unit attached to it. So what is a text unit? A text unit is a tag that is a unique identifier of a software string. It also has the source uh, language in it. Then it has a developer comment, which is not really great here, uh, but a, develop, a developer comment is usually where developers add some context to a string. And then it has a placeholder here for a translation to be added. So a text unit always has a tag, source, the comment, translation. It also has a, a state. But um, so a state is something that identifies to you where in the workflow the string is. Is it being, is it, uh, does it need to be translated? Has it been translated or it doesn't need to be reviewed? Okay, so let's say you looked at the strings, you're, you know, great, something needs to be translated. How do you send them for translation? So here on the project request page, you get to create different projects. So you get to choose the product that you want the translation to be created. Let's say Olympia, right? You just press create. What it does on the background, it creates XLIFs that uh, in all, all the, of the languages of this project. And the XLIFs are put on box under that project. So I'm going to refresh here. Um, this is pre-configured by the technical people. Okay, so that's great. So you're going to see your files here labeled uh, in this folder for this particular project. All the files are here. The source files have been added here. Okay. So then once the string goes through translation, people actually go to their cat tools. I like to use antiquated cat tools. Just happen to like that. 
people will go and translate the strings if it actually loads. See how nice it is to have modern software. So let's say the, you know translators have already translated this. So what's going to happen? The the uh, vendor or the translator who delivers a project is going to put the resulting files into this folder, localized files. So we have all the XLIFs localized, okay, in this folder. But you don't really have to worry about this at all. All you have to worry about is creating the project in Mojito, waiting for, for the translators to let you know that it is done, and all you do is you import the project here. It's going to indicate to you that it's importing the project, okay? You can also go and see by language how much has been translated in this project, and in this case we've only had two Russian strings, so it's showing <coughs> three words, okay? So once it's done, uh, we were working on this project, right? So it's taking it some time to import. It's a live demo, after all. Anyway, so when the project is imported, uh, this is what you'll see. The strings that needed translation will disappear. They will ap appear in the next step of the workflow uh, under the strings that need review. Okay, so if everything is fine, they will be just imported just fine. In this project, you can see this indicator for rejected. What that means is that in this project, when translators worked on the strings or, you know, the cat tool processed them, something happened to the variables, the placeholders. And this indicates to us that these strings, if they were merged into the build, they would break it. That's why Mojito blocks it and allows you to go in and check them. It is not going to commit the strings until they're fixed. Uh, whereas the rest of the strings, they're just being committed continuously. So let's see what happens. So it looks like this placeholder has not been translated correctly. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that and change that. In the, the cases where I know personally, right, I would go and just correct it myself. But sometimes you don't really know which one to correct. For example, here, right, this one says label, and then there's another placeholder link. I don't really speak Korean, so I have no idea which one is the label, which one is the link. I, of course, would use Google and Translate to do that. But, say, I didn't know that Google Translate existed. So, what I would do, actually, is I would ask translators to check the string again. I will use the status indicator here. I'll mark the status as needs translation again. I'll say um, hey, can we check the placeholders here? They need to stay in English. Okay, so I'm gonna save it. So now the string is marked as needs translation. What's going to happen next time I'm sending a project for translation, this is going to be automatically included in the project. Okay, so the, the workflow feature is pretty cool because it knows where, um, where the strings need to go and you always know what is their status. Okay, so let's say we're done with this, right? Now we need to, to review the strings. We can, of course, go and export the XLIF again, but say we wanted to give the reviewers access to Mojito directly. So what they would do, they would just go here. If they want to, they can go and select all of the projects and then select only their locale. Okay, and they will just want to look at the strings that need to be reviewed and there you go, they have all of the strings that need, still need to be reviewed and they can work on them. But let's say we're working only on this project. Okay, with Russian selected. So if I'm a reviewer, I can go ahead and 
just translate, I mean, review that. There's supposed to be a translation here, obviously. So let's say I'm not satisfied with this. So I can save it in Mojito directly. And you can see how the string, has, the status has changed to accepted. So now the string is fine, it's finalized, okay? And then let's say I'm a reviewer, I'm not so sure that this string um, is correct. So I want to ask the translator if it's correct or let them know what my suggestion is. Again, I can use the status thing. Another thing that is really cool is that as a user of Mojito, you can actually go and bulk search strings, which is, you know, it's kind of impossible in many tools because they're file-based. This is string-based, so you get your entire database of all the strings in all of your products that were ever created in this one view, okay? So all you need to do is filter them correctly. So we have the filters here, and let's say I want to see the translation for all the strings in Russian, in all of my repositories that have the word text in them. And then that contain the word text. And I'm still filtering by the strings that need to be reviewed. But if I want to see all of the strings, there we go. So these are all the strings with different statuses. And I actually can check, you know, if I'm not so sure about the translation that I want to use, I can check what has been previously done and then by the way, I will probably also notice, you know, that this is kind of not a really good translation for the word text in Russian. So I'm going to check that uh, and change this as well. So that's great. So as you can see, you get a lot of capabilities of managing strings. Let's see a couple of other use cases where this could be really, really useful. Okay, let's say um, you're doing an LQA. Okay, usually the way we do LQA is that we give it to a bunch of natives or the application to a bunch of native speakers, right? They send us screenshots and they, they will say, okay, so in this particular screenshot, this string is incorrect. Well, it's, it'll be really easy through Mojito, even if you don't know which product it is, right? Or you don't really know where in the file the string is or which file that is, you don't care because you have all the filtering capabilities you ever needed because you have the entire database right here. So all you need to do is to go and select your language, you know, and you probably know what the source text says and you will search for, for the right um, string, right, and you will find it, okay? Usually as a project manager, you don't really speak all of the, I don't know, 30 languages that you localize into. So how do you make changes, right? Usually it's really, really hard because you have to go and you have to email the linguist or you have to email the, the, their project manager or you have to use some sort of a system like we use Jira, right, to track them down. But here it's not, it's not that hard for me because all I have to do, right, if I want to change the term for the word email in all of the strings across all of my products for Taiwanese, then I can just search for this word here. I get all the strings, I can select them all. And then once they're selected, I can just do this again, really nice. Change the term email or probably write a nicer message. Um, and then again, these strings are now marked for translation. So they will next time I export they will go directly to translators and they will change the term. So that also helps, you know how you have, like, you have conflicts. Um, sometimes you change something on your side and then you forget to tell the translators that you changed it. Next time you receive the file, the, all of the changes were overwritten. So this does not happen with the system. In addition, um, imagine a really complicated case where you're doing a review right, or one team is doing a review and then another team is doing an LQA and LQA finds that, okay, this string should be finalized, uh, let's say the email should be elektronne pochta in Russian, okay, and then, but the string is under review with another team, so usually what happens, right, you will go and change the string and then when the file 
files come back from review, their translation will override your change. So that doesn't happen here. Okay, so no overrides. This is protected, uh, pretty safe. Um, before Mojito, I had to remember all of the strings I changed. And I had to monitor and make sure that our vendors changed them as well. So now I don't really have to do that. Also, sometimes it happens in, in LQAs that um, you get a, a screenshot of some really random looking string and you can't find it in the files anywhere. And you don't really know what happened to it. So you go ask the developers, hey, did you do anything to the string? Is it even in your product? And they say, okay, we don't remember. So this deals with it pretty well because you can filter by, um, you can go in and look for all unused strings. Unused strings are the strings that were once in the product, but they're no longer in the product, but they still exist in the system. So there will be no more confusion about where the string went. You know for sure that it's not used anymore, but you can still leverage the translation. And Speaking of leveraging, um, we do have basic leveraging in Mojito. It leverages the strings um, in a way that makes sense for, for software products. So what it does, let's say a developer changes a little, a little piece of the string. Mojito will leverage it and the translation will appear um, right away in the product. Okay, because it's always better to have translation than not to have it. Even the, if the translation is slightly, um, you know, slightly off, like a punctuation change. So Mojito will leverage that, but it doesn't really have the capabilities that usual TMSs have in terms of leverage. So that is the demo part. Okay, I know you have a lot of questions probably, or you're still sleeping. If you're paying attention, that's good. That was not a good joke. Everyone makes that joke, I know. Right. Wow, we have a lot of people here. Um, yeah, so let's get started. We are a little behind the schedule. Um, and I'm going to try to finish this in 30 minutes. And there are a lot of stuff to cover. So if you... Um, have your laptop um, and if you want to follow along you're more than welcome to do so um, yeah and if you don't have anything just watch um, <laughs> yeah and if you have questions um, if it's short questions I can answer it as I go along if it's something long then um, you can come and talk to me after the event or you can always email us um, that way we can help you. Um, so the expectation of this technical session is to actually have Mojito downloaded, installed, and have it up and running. And I'll show you how to use the basic command line to extract the strings and generate localized files. Um, we'll go, I have a Hello, Hello World app. Um, it's an iOS app, so I'm sorry for the window users. But yeah, we will go through the full cycle of um, localization of this Hello World app. So that will be um, what I'm going to cover now. So yeah, simple architecture overview, and then we'll do hands-on. And we'll talk about automation at the end. So this is Mojito architecture. We have web application and we have command line interface. So basically web application is, um, it has database to store your data. And for um, data access layer, we use Hibernate. For um, transaction management, we use Spring. For localization related tasks, we use the famous Okapi framework. Um, we have web service so that we, our client's um, command line interface and the front end can talk to the back end. We have our front end written in React.js and front end is mostly used by our users like PMs and translators. 
Um, Mojito command line interface is actually the one that connects your source code repository and the web application. Um, it is used to grab the files and generate localized files. Um, you can automate this whole process if you integrate Mojito command line interface with Jenkins. Um, yeah, um, Mojito supports both online and offline translations. If you can give access um, to your translators on Mojito, it's great they can work directly on Mojito. Um, if for some reason um, you cannot have your translators um, directly access Mojito, then you can export actually files for them so that they can use the, their own tools to do the translation and there is a way to import it back. Um, Mojito is very flexible. You can configure it in different ways to use whatever database you want to and whatever um, file storage you want to. Um, we have good documentation about how to configure Mojito, so you can check it out online. And for us, we use Box to exchange files to our vendors because they want to have XLIV. So that way it's a lot easier to collaborate with our translators and they get notifications whenever there are new things and they can just simply upload files to Box without ever accessing Mojito. So um, I have a uh, Right now, I'm going to download and install Mojito. I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, you guys can follow along. Um, if you have Mac and Brew, you can do it with Brew install commands. Um, if you don't, then you can go to the GitHub page where we have executables release, and you can download it there. So let me go ahead and actually do that. Well, I have to, I guess. Can everybody see this? Make it bigger. <laughs> Is it possible to switch to the other screen as well? What if the people behind me cannot see anything? This one? No, the screen. If you can switch, show to both screens or no? Um, I don't think I can do that. Do you guys see anything? Yeah. Okay. Or you guys can move to this end. Um, how does that work? So this will install the command line interface. And this will install the web application. <clears throat> and can you guys see this and um, actually download the jars from there? Yes. Okay, good. Let me know if I'm going too fast. So the next step is to actually run Mojito application. It's just simple command of Mojito web app. And it takes some time um, to get started. And when this is up and running, you can actually access Mojito from your local host. Port 8080. And we have pre-set up admin um, password, so admin change me. Um, this is documented in Mojito getting started page as well.
So this is actual mojito. It looks very empty because we don't have anything there yet. So um, using the command line, I'm going to show you how to create demo project. Actually, that command is here. Mojito demo create dash m. What it does is that it creates demo repository in Mojito, adds a whole bunch of locales, and it adds some strings and translations. So if you go back to your web application and refresh the page, you will now have demo application showing up. And these are the locales that you added. And the count that you see is the number of strings and number of words. And you can actually click them and see them in the workbench. Make sense? Are you all with us? With us? With me? <laughs> Anybody lost? Okay. So that's Mojito. Um, what I'm going to do now is we're going to try localizing this Hello World app. Um, I have created Hello World uh, iOS app and I put it on GitHub. So if you're interested um, in trying out later, you can download it and play with it if you have Mac. You need Xcode 7 and Simulator to play with this. And for me, I have actually cloned it already, so I'm going to skip this step. And if I show you my Xcode, which is really small, I have one string that is, I don't know how to make this bigger. Yeah, it, but there is one string called hello world. And if you look at English version, Spanish version, Korean version, everything is hello world because we haven't actually translated them just yet. And if you run them, run it, I have it running already. This is my cute little app, Hello World, only one string, okay? So with Mojito, we want to create a repo for this app and we want to localize this string. To create a repository in Mojito, we do uh, Mojito repo create, give a name, and give a locale. I'm going to add two locales, Spanish and Korean. If you go back to your repository page, now your hello world is there with two locales we just added. And it says done because there's no string to be translated. So what I'm going to do now is to push the hello world string to my window. Let me make sure that I'm on the right path where the L project directories are. Oh, you know what? I have a demo instance here. So it created two. Let me just do it. Push it again so that we only process the file that we're interested in. And 
When we go back to Mojito and refresh the page, you will see two strings that is translation. When we go back, uh, when we go to Workbench, we can actually add translation here. I'm gonna pretend that I speak Spanish, and this one I'm Korean, so I can do this. If I have the right keyboard. So now your repository is done. We will generate localized files now. So. Um, the last option looks kind of hard. Um, this is actually locale mapping command. Um, Mojito has very standardized set of locales. It's always in the form of KOKR, like language region. But some um, OSs do not support such format. For example, iOS only allows KO for Korea, ES for Spanish. So we are doing language mapping. So when we generate localized files, they get generated into the right directory or right file name. Okay. Um, let me just show you Xcode, although it's really hard to see. For some reason, it didn't change. Oh, I think I I didn't do the right command. That's one question. Hmm? Uh, if you wanted to, to map, for example, the Spanish Mexico, yeah. what will you do in this case? Um, then you have to specifically create ESMX locale. Because I think iOS allows ESMX. Okay. But for Spanish, it only takes ES. Let me see. Maybe I didn't do this right. Yeah, it's this command. Yeah. Notice, like, here I have KOKR, LDAP project. This is wrong. For ES. Um, you need to have it in es.lproj for iOS to understand your language. So let's go back to the Xcode and see the files now that it will have the translation that I just added on the monitor. So then if I do a clean build, of my app, um, it will have the translation now. Um, I can switch it back to Korean version. go back to my app, it will have Korean showing up. So that is the end-to-end -end workflow of software localization. Um, how many of you are doing uh, software localization at your company? And you are the technical person who works on the tools and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and how many of you have fully automated this workflow? Okay, good for you, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, it is very painful. So, um, let's go back um, here. Yeah, so we just 
rebuild and localize this app. Um, what I just did was very manual. Um, whenever something changes, I had to run the CLI command by hand. And if you work for a company that has many software products with many versions, you know it wouldn't scale. And with all these agile process of constant change, um, you don't want to just sit on your desk running these comments all day long. So what you want to do is automate this workflow. And that's when Jenkins come in. Um, do you guys all know what Jenkins is? Um, if you're a developer, you're pretty familiar with Jenkins because Jenkins will do continuous integration, the build and release for you. Would you work with Bamboo too? Hmm? Bamboo. Bamboo? Do you know Bamboo? No. Yeah, similar. Bamboo to is similar as to Jenkins. To Jenkins right? Or Travis. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you think they're going to work with uh, another? Um, if you can call Mojito commands within Bamboo, it will work. So you don't want to manually run these commands. You want to have Jenkins job run it for you. So whenever there is a new project, what we do is we create a repository in Mojito and we create a matching Jenkins job. We configure the Jenkins job so that it gets triggered on certain changes whenever there is source change, whenever there is translation change, or if you are not really busy, then you can just build it on a scheduled time, hourly base, minute base. Um, and um, what this will do is it will clone the latest and greatest of your source code. It will extract the strings for you and push it into Mojito. That way, Mojito always has your latest uh, strings. And it will also run. Um, it will also run pull command to generate localized files files for you, so that you constantly have localized files with your latest translation. And it will commit back um, the localized resource files for you to the repository, so that developers constantly get the latest and greatest of your translations. Any questions about this process? So the only manual process in this picture is the onboarding process. Um, at previous company at Yahoo, we even automate this onboarding process. So everything gets created in, in behind the curtain. But yeah, here Box is not a um, big company. And we get this request very, um, I don't know, not even once a month. This happens when there is new software product created or a library gets created and that has to be localized. So we will get this maybe like once a quarter and it the whole process ta uh, takes me less than 30 minutes. Like all I do is create a repo in Mojito with the command line, um, create matching Jenkins job. We have Jenkins template created so that all I have to do is just copy and paste the source code repository, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then for the first run, you need to verify that it runs successfully. You need to make sure that uh, expected strings appear in Mojito, and um, you Mojito job, the Jenkins job can actually commit the files back to the source code repository. Sometimes the dev team forgets to give us access and it will fail to commit. So yeah, once you have the one successful job, then you can pretty much forget about it because now um, it's up to the PM to do the translations and um, whenever there are changes, they will constantly um, feed back to the source code repository. Questions? Do you have any need to mark up translation? For example, in enterprise software, when every time you release those products, mm -hmm. we need to make sure every string is uh, externalized into resource bundle. Mm -hmm. So how can you make sure the developer they externalize all the string to resource bundle? Well, that is still a problem here. Um, sometimes developers forget to externalize the strings and then Mojito will know about it. So what 
as a uh, as an internationalization developer here, um, I try to um, do training sessions with the developer and show them what is the best practices. And um, we do code reviews. So whenever um, someone creates new code and submits for review, um, if they have hard coded strings there, then it wouldn't pass the review process. So it's actually up to the developer and we actually have to educate the developers um, to follow the right practice. Um, yeah, I personally thought about like, how do I catch this beforehand? You know, do they really want to have hard coded string or is it a mistake? Maybe I can run a script to detect it, but then there are also like intended hard coded strings that it never bubbles up to the user. So yeah, how do you, Differenti differentiate between those strings. Yeah. Do you guys have any good answers to this question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at Yahoo, we used to have this tool called static code analysis. Basically, it's going to like, it's like a linked tool that it's going to go through all your source code and flag potential hard coded streams. <clears throat> but then at the same time, there are like so many errors. Um, showing up, potential errors showing up. So I don't know if they actually go through each and one um, of the errors to resolve them. Do you go to the full localization before you transfer them? Um, some teams do and some teams don't. It depends on the um, code base that you're working on. For Box Web app application, we do so to the localization so that they do the testing, but not everybody is actually you know, doing it, even though it's available. So again, it's the education that we have to tell the developers, hey, there's this cool feature called pseudo localization. Have you ever tried it? Yeah, we used to give swags for whoever um, does pseudo localization. Mm. Right. Maybe you can add a new feature to Mojito to have the fake pseudo locale <laughs> and have pseudo setting and then just, you know, Run the pseudo localize on the command line. Yeah. So question here. So so uh, that means uh, for Mojito to extract the string is a very to extract the string from the already externalized resource file files into Mojito. Right, right. Okay. So Mojito knows certain types of files, the well-known resource bundle extensions right. like dot properties or dot strings. Um, yeah, it's on the web. I think it's five or six. Uh, we support iOS, Android, um, <coughs> Windows has two types, REW, REX and yeah, REST and, yeah, and REST W. Yeah, those two um, the properties and the exit files. Okay. Yeah. yeah, what about the email file for that? No, we do not support in-house. There's no way to customize it. Um, well, Mojito is open sourced mm -hmm. and it's built uh, using Okapi framework. Mm -hmm. So as long as the Okapi framework has your um, yeah, support for your file format, then it will be easy to extend Mojito to yeah, meet your needs. So in the application code, Mm -hmm. For like the whole overall example, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it references the like key for the translation. Mm -hmm. Is the key like machine generated, or can it be like customly named so that like it's familiar like hello world? Um, for iOS, it's machine generated because you run um, a script to generate your localized files. I think it's called Gen String or String Gen. gen string. Yeah, Gen String. Um, so it will look at your source code and it will actually generate it for you. Um, but in other code base, you might have a you know, meaningful key and the value for your translations. It's always good practice so that you know exactly like which string you're talking about just by looking at the key. Right. They're probably going to use it at first half only to externalize. Right. right. It's right. not like a repeating, recurring. No. It's not going to work that way. Yeah. It's going to use the same keys over and over. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. It's better to use the same key. You don't want to create a new key every time. Right, because if <laughs> your key changes, then, um, well, actually, the, Mojito, the way that Mojito detects new, new string 
is key value and the comment combination. And Mojito does basic uh, matching based on the source string. So even though your key changes, Mojito will um, know that we have translation for your string, but then it flags it as like someone has to take a look at it. I guess you can configure Mojito so that it doesn't do it that way. But that's how we handle the strings at Box because we don't change the keys unless yeah something changes a lot. How about on the translation memory side? You can do anything with the TM. Um, so Mojito doesn't show you any fuzzy matches mm -hmm. or glossary matches, but it does source matching and the base uh, basic. Um, so it will um, do the matching for you and whatever you send to the translators are the ones that are not translated. So if you change your string from hello world to hello box, Mojito is going to detect the box and it's going to send the words? Right, Mojito will detect the hello box and it will appear in Mojito web application as new string. Okay. Because it's, the source has changed. But it won't show the fast match. It just yeah. show the new string. Well, it, it will take it as as the whole string, hello world. It's one string, hello box is another string to translate. Right. So yeah. if there's a typo in the string like, hello world, it will it's be a new string. string. Um, then you will hear from your translators, most likely. <laughs> um, and it is a bad practice to have a typo in the English string. If your English is bad, then your translation will be bad too. <laughs> And um, that's the developer's responsibility to have your string correct. So this means you will not implement the TM before setting out to render. Well, we um, we filter out what we have already, mm -hmm. and we only give them what we don't have. For like, example, like a hello 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 box, and now become the hello world, right? It's only one word different, right? Right. So did you show any TM in the X? No, 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 no. Wow. So that's why I said we don't have fuzzy matching in okay. Mojito. That's yeah. Pay when the, like, the whole new well, story. we have vendor and the TMs gets managed by the vendor on too, that side. On that side, so. So that means you never implement the TM in house. No, but it's not really hard to implement I know, something. Really At Yahoo, we did this as a hackathon project. <laughs> yeah, we, we had it. Yeah. yeah, then we had in house. Yeah, because if you yeah. never have it in house, you rely on vendor. Then, right. then you need to change vendor and then become the big headache again. Yeah. Yeah, and there is a way to like import and export TM using the CLI, so you can always play with the TM if you have a TM. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, if you are using Mojito and making changes, make sure you contribute back to Mojito so that we all benefit from your wonderful changes. Um, the process is not different from the regular open source project contribution process. So just create a pull request and um, yeah, ask us to review. And if your code is good quality, then yeah, we'll merge it. So if you need help, um, yeah, talk to me or talk to our team. Um, there is good documentation. We have good getting started documentation to um, play around. I will have this um, available um, in the IMAP page so that you have references. And if you find bugs, yeah, follow bugs and we all fix it together. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what's next. Because as you could see, this is not a really translator ready tool. We don't have leveraging, we don't have a bunch of things, we don't really have, um, we have authentication, we don't have authorization, so people can just go in Mojito and I mean, anyone can do anything if you give them access to it. Um, so what we want to do is we want to add I mean, we want to add, by saying we want to add it, I'm, I'm saying that you guys, if you know how to add it, you should also add it because it's now open source. So we want to add terminology management and checks. 
Okay, and then we, we don't really want to rebuild a TMS that would be the same TMS that everyone else has because we can just buy that TMS. All right, if we want to continue building it, that I think we should think as a community, we should think what a, the next modern TMS should be. So Lilt is doing some of the stuff. They're doing predictable MT or a predictive um, MT. And I think that's pretty cool. And that's something that, that we would want to use. If you have some, you know, some better ideas, that's great. What I want it to be is something that is where translators go into that, right? Without even doing or configuring anything, it gives them the best, the best um, version of the translation that should be there. So that is the ideal state, right? Without telling the system, the system should work in a way that actually helps you instead of you going and spending days to configure it. So another thing is that we're missing is, you know, these are pretty basic and standard things that a TMS should have. Statistics and reporting, we can't really tell right now um, what person translated what and how many words were translated um, at some point or by, by which person. Um, yeah, we don't have, you know how translators sometimes have questions? That rarely happens, but they do have questions. You know? Anyway, so I have like a, a, a queue of a hundred queries uh, waiting for me when I'm done with this uh, that I need to answer. And guess where those queries are? They're not in Mojito. So I need to go and answer these questions from translators. And to do that, I need to go and search the code base to understand what developers were trying to do with the code, right? So that's really hard. What I wanted to do is that for translators to be able to ask a question and the question would go to, to the developer directly and they can answer that instead of me doing that. Kind of lazy. Um, yeah, some, some other things are hotkeys and um, we, we don't know of any, any company that is using Mojito at a larger scale than us and I'm sure, you know, scalability issues will come up. So these are the things that we're thinking about. Um, write down your ideas on sticky notes. They will go up there. So we need help with that. If you can develop code, if you're, you know, a PM, if you just have, a, have good ideas, just share them with us. Um, I think everyone can contribute. It's a really good tool. And there are so many open source tools out there. Um, it's really surprising to me that we're not using them more, not collaborating more. I'm looking at you guys at the back there, the Evernote, hi there. <laughs> so I want to thank the people who made this happen. This is our team. Um, that's me there, that's Adrian, Jean, Will, and G. Uh, you don't see a lot of them here, guess why? Because they're either not a part of a company or traveling or, you know, in another team, but they still care about Mojito and they still want to contribute, and so can you. The re and guess what? Some other people who didn't make it to the photo also contribute to Mojito, so I wanted to give credit to Cattell and Gino for, you know, helping us work on that. So it's been... Uh, you know, quite a few months since we've been working on it and a few people contributed and so can you. The reason why we wanted to open source it is because we really believe that it doesn't make sense for everyone to build the same TMS over and over again. Some TMSs are pretty good, but I think if we just build one of them and open source it, then whatever the next person adds on will be better. Okay, so we can all use it. And Mojito is also uh, based on um, open source projects like Okapi. Um, so, what I want to do is, again, to encourage you to contribute. Don't have to be a developer. Uh, also, what I want to ask of some of you who work for big companies, uh, why don't you open source your, your stuff? Just open source it. It doesn't, it actually took us, you know, a few months to clean up the code so we can open source it, but you can, you can just, you know, invest in that and then other people can contribute to your products and you can benefit from that too. So I want to encourage everyone, if you have something, don't hide it. It's always better, you know, if we just share and progress together than just, you know, being stuck at this place where we're using the same CAD tool for the past two decades and it doesn't really change. So thank you for coming. 
Uh, if you want more information, go to Mojito.Global. We have a lot of documentation there. Engineers hated me for that. So lots of documentation. You can download Mojito. Um, there is a link to the GitHub repo you can contribute. If you have ideas, if you don't want to write on the sticky notes, just tweet, tweet them to that hashtag and then we'll take a look. Um, if you're an engineer and you're not really sure if your idea would you know, work well with Mojito, we will also help with specs and help validate your ideas. So just feel free to contribute. We really want everyone to participate. Um, and thanks for coming. So I want to open it to a Q&A, but first I need to open the, the chat room where people might have had questions while we were talking. Let's see, no? No questions. So if anyone's connected to the streaming, I'm not gonna, it does this really freaky thing when you open the, the stream, so I'm not gonna do it. So if, if okay, six people. Six people, if you're out there, <laughs> Uh, post your questions to the chat and I'm going to open it to your questions. We do have mics so that the six people can hear us, uh, but we don't have any volunteers to pass the mics. So what I want you to ask is that, come on, you can stand up and come to the mic and ask a question. It's not really hard. All right, can we use that, that one? All right, let's start, let's start doing this. I think there, there needs to be a little movement because I feel, you know, I feel like I'm the only one moving. Is that, now it is. Yeah, yeah that's true, we can pass them on, but yeah, we don't really have people to run around. I volunteer to, oh wow, that's loud. Uh, I volunteer to run the mic around. Hi, uh, I'm Anas, I'm localization producer at Apple. Um, my question is, uh, does Mojito support right to left? Mm -hmm. Languages, so yes, Hebrew, Arabic, uh, the level of support, um, mm -hmm. like, um, is there support for uh, Unicode bidirectional characters? Yeah. Are they surfaced? Are they visible for the reviewers or the, te or the translators? Yeah, so we have, so again, Mojito is an internal tool. We do have normalization in it, so it does support right to left. Uh, I don't know if we have any examples here, um, but a box we localize into Arabic and, and yeah, Mojito supports that. Uh, in terms of what you're talking about, like LQA, right? People can't really see any, th any translations in context there yet, which, you know, is another thing that we could build. So it's not connected there, but Mojito will be a really good base, base tool uh, if you want to build in context. And we do support, it's, it has normalization built in. Thanks. All right. Some peer passing out. Maybe it's a stupid question and it's obvious, but when you leverage translations, does it go, the status of it is it needs review or you just like let it fly? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. So normally if the, um, okay, so the way Mojito leverages is that it checks the tag Okay, the, the unique identifier of the string, and it checks the source and the comment. So let's say um, you have a string that is exactly the same, which is probably someone on the background, it's probably someone just recreating a file in the same repository. If, it's the, if the tag, the source, and the developer comment are exactly the same, then Mojito will pick up the status that um, the exactly the same string had and we'll attach it to it. So if it was accepted, then it will be accepted. If it needs review, it will be needs review. Okay, but if, if the tag is the same, the source is slightly different, Mojito will mark it as needs translation. So the string will still appear in the UI, but it will go to translators to validate. Thanks. All right, nice, nice. People running around. <laughs> I was worried that people didn't drink enough wine, but I can see that. So, so my question, well, I have actually two questions. Okay. First question is how big is your database? Like uh, uh, you demoed the search function. Yeah. So if the database is getting bigger and bigger, would the search and the showing uh -huh. results part um, become slow? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like a, a word server. 
um, sometimes if you search one term, it can take yeah. like a few seconds, even a couple of minutes to get the result. Mm -hmm. That's my qu first question. The second question is uh, the LQA part. Um, would the reviewer see the um, kind of string in the application or just, just the string mm -hmm. itself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thanks. so let me answer the first question or the second question first and the first question second. Uh, yeah, so will the Mojito does not have in context review capabilities for now. The only thing that you can do is attach a link to a screen or, you know, in the, the comments section there, when you give comments to translators, you can attach or put a link to the screenshot. So Mojito is not for, for reviewing things yet. It's just for managing strings. And um, what I presented was what just a use case if you have a review going on, how Mojito can help with it. But it doesn't have any in context yet. So it doesn't really have that in context review capabilities, which, you know, we can all add again. And the second question is, how big is our database? So our production database, um, it's, it's about 80,000 strings right now. So it's not that huge, uh, not super big. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to behave if you had, you know, 10 million strings or 100 million strings. So that's something that we could also validate if a company that's bigger than ours could start using it. Um, from what I saw, it doesn't really, we had some, some performance issues which we fixed. And it's working really fast now. So on, on our production that has, you know, just under 100,000 strings, it doesn't, or 80,000 80, strings, it performs really well. Yeah, but again, I can't really answer the question what's going to happen if you put millions and millions of strings there. All right, other questions? Okay, here, I have a mic. Let's see, are you working, Mike? Here. Hi. Come back. <laughs> um, what I was wondering is, can any user see all strings? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you planning on making different yeah. for statuses for people for security reasons? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, uh, definitely planning to do that because it's, you know, unless you really trust your team, um, it's, it's not really usable right now because anyone that has access to Mojito has access to everything. Well. We gave access to Mojito to some of the people we work with in the regions and we trust them because they're not going to change something that they're not really sure about because these are the people who work with our direct customers. If they change, if they do something crazy, then, you know, they will probably suffer from that. So, I mean, we're pretty open in giving, you know, permissions to people within Box, uh, but we still, have to build in that um, uh, authorization um, capability. So that's something that we're gonna work on because we do want reviewers to come to Mojito. We probably could let them do that. Um, yeah, I don't think you know people are evil and will change anything, but it is a security issue. But it is secure, so there is a, a mechanism that allows you to uh, configure it so that people will actually go and have to go through two-factor authentication or user credentials to, uh, to log in. So it's not open on the web. <laughs> it's not like anyone can access your product strings. Oh, great. Um, all right, hi all, I have a question. So you create the exit files to send them then to the translators. Do you do it manually and send the files manually? Or do your translators get some kind of an automatic notification, for example, by email? Okay, so the way we have it set up, and you can set it up in any way, you wanna do it manually, um, have fun. But we actually uh, have it set up so that when I click that button, uh, export, right, create a project, it puts the files on Box. And our translators have access to Box. And once the files are added, they they get a no notification. I usually shoot them a quick email uh, that has a line that says, 
hey, today's files are ready. Deadline is on Friday. And that's all I, that's all I do. That's my entire conversation. <laughs> I mean, I'm usually nicer, I swear. I wish our vendors are here. <laughs> okay. I know you. <laughs> yeah, so you partially answer one of my questions, uh -huh. but uh, one question I have is during the project creation phase. So it seemed like you had to manually create the project and sort of start it. Do you have any automated way to say anything that comes from this mm -hmm. bigger project just automatically yeah. goes for translation every time? Yeah, so we don't have it set up for, for ourselves for a reason because I don't wanted to send, like you could, it's really easy to set it up. You can just create a schedule and say, okay, Mojito, anytime this project has new strings um, every Friday, just send them out into the world, right? Um, I, yeah, that would be, that would make sense to do. And it's really, really easy to do. So if you're an engineer for your company, you'll be able to really easily set it up. Uh, we didn't set it up because um, we still, we don't have that many strings. I mean, I don't have a lot of trouble creating projects myself and I want to see what's in them before I send them. So that's why we didn't set it up that way. But it's really easy to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I also have another question on the phase um, before the strings get to the tool. Mm -hmm. So have you thought about having something like um, static code analysis tool or something that sorts of prevents strings that are not ready to be localized to be inputted in the tool. Mm -hmm. For example, strings that maybe have a date that has been hard coded uh -huh. or something uh -huh. that can be yeah. easily detected as something that should not go for translation yet. Yeah, so what you're talking about is some sort of a, a internationalization checker. Uh, so Mojito doesn't deal with that. Um, what happens actually in our development process is that developers will run tests as a part of their normal process. They run tests for, for everything they build and this test would check for internationalization. And I know, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if some tools check for, for hard-coded things. Hard-coded things are really difficult to detect because the, as I found out recently, um, there is no, really in the code, there is no difference between the, the string, a string that is going to be displayed to a user versus a regular string that's being passed in the code. So unless the string is externalized, you don't really know if it's hard coded. So it's kind of a difficult problem to solve. Um, but yeah, I could see, uh, I would say that best practice would be for developers to check how well it's internationalized because what Mojito gets is are already externalized strings. So yeah, the short answer is no, we don't check for them. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Hello. Um, I'll stand. Um, <laughs> so this was presented as a, as a localization platform, mm -hmm. but it appeared to me like it was really focused on tr translation. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the first question is about uh, all the UI localization that might be needed for your product. You know, if you have uh, CSS, if you have uh, some limitations in terms of UI, things that need to be resized, that kind of work that I would call uh, localization engineering. Is, is there any aspect to, to, uh, to that side of the localization workflow in, uh, in Mojito? Yeah, um, thanks for the question. There is nothing that ha that is dealing with that in Mojito. So what it can help you with is that once you run into this problem, that something that has to be resized or a string that needs to be shortened, it would help you do that. Uh, you sure, like a, if, if a string is too long, it can be You can, can be set reported. it up for, for that, but no, we don't really have that now. Um, and honestly, if you think about it, it has to be something. So yeah, this is a localization platform, or if you want to call it translation platform, sure. So what? But what you're describing is that um, it would have to check the the space in the UI and the length that is allowed. 
So it would have to know somehow what is the maximum length that's allowed, and then it would have to flag up right. all the strings that right. it. Yeah. Build so boundaries. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah, I guess that would be possible to build. But what what we do instead, though, we do encourage best design and engineering practices. So we go and and talk to designers and developers to internationalize their apps really well so that we don't have to face these issues. But yeah, Mojito doesn't really deal with that, but it does help you um, change the string really quickly. So for example, before if you had to change a string, you would have to go and find the file and change it in the file, but now you can just change it and it's gonna, it's gonna be updated really quickly. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't it doesn't deal with any internationalization related issue. It's mostly it's mostly for um, translation. For, yeah, for continuous continuous localization. We call it localization because it does have the part of the um, like it it does check for uh, broken placeholders or so something that could break the build, right? And it does connect to your um, to your CI or continuous integration pipeline. So yeah, I wouldn't yeah. call it a translation tool. A translation tool sounds like, okay. yeah. <laughs> and I have another quick question. Um, is there any plan to support uh, translation uh, history where you can trace basically yeah. the life of a string, mm -hmm. see if it changed and mm -hmm. when, and yeah. sometimes it changes and then it changes back to the original value and you don't understand. Yeah, you don't so, see. so Mojito does support that on the back end. We don't have a way to surfaces, surface it in the UI yet, so we're thinking about the best way that would be, you know, the most efficient way of what user would really want to see, and then we can add it. So it's something that we're thinking about. Again, anyone wants to contribute, do that. Um, yeah, but it's something, you know, if you have time to keep, the, I mean, we will definitely invest our time in keeping to develop this, but if we have time to for that particular feature, it needs a little bit of um, product management work. So awesome. yeah, that's something that we're thinking about. Thank you. Because it helps to troubleshoot. Okay, uh, technical track people arrived. I think, okay, you guys have any questions that are still pending from the technical track? Something, you know, personal you might wanna ask me. I don't think you've, you haven't learned anything, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yeah, this works. How would this tool work for language service providers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that question. So, per, um, it, it's on, but it's really quiet. So, the question was about how is this tool beneficial to language service providers and how can they use it? So I think that's an excellent question because I feel like the moment language service providers hear about something open source that is not theirs, you know, they think, oh my God, we're being threatened now, nobody will use our tool, which is actually not correct because you can take this tool and you can give it to your clients, right? So that would actually make your life so much easier because the tool is pretty clean, right? It connects to their, to their code. You don't have to have your tool integrate to their code. What if they, they can manage it on their own, right? Or because their engineers know when something changes, like when they change a repo, they can just change it in Mojito. You on your side, if you use your TMS, right, as a language service provider, if you integrated it into someone else's code, you never know what changes there. Something breaks, you will never know, right? So you can give this to your clients so that they can monitor, you know, what's going on, on their side and make sure it's always connected to the right branch. And then you can integrate to Mojito. So you can use your translation workbench, uh, whatever your LSP uses, integrated to Mojito. Mojito will pass strings to your translation workbench. So we don't even have to go to, through that step uh, where we put files anywhere. They can easily go directly to, to your TMS. And you know, if you have clients that are really small, they don't really wanna pay for, for a TMS, right? Or you can do instead, not that I encourage it, but 
what you can do instead, you can say, hey, there is this wonderful, you know, small tool, we'll give it to you for free, we'll charge you a little bit, you know, to go and um, set it up for you, and then there you go, you get clean X lives, you know, standardized format, instead of having to waste all of this time and money on the files that you usually have to deal with. So LSPs can definitely use Mojito, and I don't think it's a competitor to, to anything, obviously, right? Uh, and I think it would actually be more, LSPs should be the ones to be distributing it among clients because it's, it's good for you, because you get either clean files or you can integrate uh, with that. So yeah, those are my thoughts on that. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Right, everyone wants to leave. I see that you want to go home. Okay, one more question. Uh, no one gets to leave yet. All right, Nicole's bringing the mic. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Janik, and I'm from Hi. Middlebury Institute of International Studies. Um, my question would be, um, have you considered uh, making this platform uh, available in more locales? Because I viewed your GitHub um, page, and it's, also, it's already available in four locales other than English. Yeah. I was wondering if uh, you're interested in making it uh, available in, say, simplified Chinese or traditional Chinese, because yeah. we're actually looking for projects for our graduate practicum. Yes, and, yeah. we want your help. Uh, you guys want to translate Mojito? Yes. Yes, we want your help. So the reason why it's in four languages is because the team speaks four languages. And so we went and translated it ourselves. So yeah, and we can, we actually, we internationalize Mojito. So it's, uh, it supports different languages and it's actually really easy to translate it because we can just export Xlips with Mojito UI strings. So there we go. Look at that, French speaking people. We have Mojito UI in French. All right. Uh, yeah, so I can't yeah, speak for the quality. I hope it's good. It's Jean Arambo's fault in case he watches the recording. Um, so anyway, yes, uh, we would like your help to translate it. Uh, you will be contributing to an open source project. And just let me know. Um, give me your card. Right. Thank you, or email me, yeah, and then I'll, I can let you know, and we can work together. Because I know you guys have pra uh, practicum or yeah, all your projects. Practicum. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, we're really excited to contribute. Thank you. Nice. Thanks for that. All right. First contribution. <laughs> okay. So it looks like it's it's dying out here. All right. No more questions. We have more wine. Giving a bottle of wine to the person who's going to ask the last question. Oh, okay. There we go. I knew it. Okay, last question. The mic is not on. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so no, we don't yet. But we want it to be there. So we want so little uh, open source and API to their predictive M team. So it looks nice. We want to use it. Um, so I'm not sure you know, when we'll get to work on that. We don't have it yet, but we want to have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, load. Um, OK, so chat, chat room is free. I will let you go soon. OK, all right, thank you all for coming, and thanks volunteers for helping out. It's really nice to meet you too.